How's it going my awesome bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're making something pretty unique. A 100% whole wheat, no need, cold fermented focaccia. So let's go to the kitchen, check it out. You can never have too many focaccia recipes. It's just so versatile. And I had never made a 100% whole wheat version. And of course, unsurprisingly, it came out really well. The whole wheat flour brings tons of flavor and a beautiful texture too. And it's not just the flour that adds flavor here. It is the cold bulk fermentation step that brings a lot of it too. And it's not just super tasty, it's very easy to make too. Especially because it's a no knead dough. I have realized that when doing cold bulk fermentation, kneading is not required in most cases. A few folds here and there can achieve the same result. So let's get right to it and see what we need to make this. For the dough, we'll need some whole wheat flour, yeast, salt, olive oil and water. The flour that I'm using has a protein content of 13%. If your flour is weaker, you might want to use less water. The toppings are of course totally up to you and up to your taste. There are thousands of different things you can top this with, but I chose goat's cheese, olives, chives and of course some more olive oil. You could even go as basic as a little bit of olive oil and some salt, it would still be great. For baking, I'll be using my Lloyd's Pan's pizza pan. It's heavy duty, it's non-stick, and if you want to check it out, you can find it in my Amazon shop, link down below. We'll also need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, and a temperature probe. And that is all the equipment that we need. Right, first things first, I'm using room temperature water. Because this is a no-need dough, it's not going to warm up very much as we mix it. If your kitchen is any warmer than this, I would suggest using slightly cooler water. But anything in between 20 degrees Celsius and 24 degrees Celsius should be totally fine at room temperature. And that's 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, so in a large bowl, combine the water, the yeast, the salt and the olive oil. Give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve the salt completely and hydrate the yeast. Mix it well, because this is the only chance to dissolve the salt. Once you don't feel any more salt scraping against the bottom of the bowl, add the flour and continue mixing. Mix until there is no dry flour left. And after that, keep mixing for another 30 seconds quite vigorously to get some gluten going. And I know a few people will say, well, that's not a no need dough anymore. You're mixing it. But I disagree. What I always say is that if you're not mixing it with your hands and the dough is not leaving the bowl, it's a no need dough. Once you have mixed it up well, take its temperature. You want it to be around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit. Mine came out a little bit warmer. And if this happens, there's a very easy solution because what follows is a chilling and folding process. And all we need to do to control the temperature and bring it down sooner is to shorten the intervals between folds. So I'll just leave this dough to chill for 15 minutes, then fold it. To perform a fold, wet your hand with water, then pick up the edge of the dough, fold it over the middle, then keep going around in a circle until the dough ball becomes nice and tight. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, a few folds will achieve the same result as kneading. As we fold the dough, we rearrange the gluten strands they get layered, stretched and tightened. This will help the dough keep its shape. This will ensure that it traps more gas inside it and gains more volume. And using the same principle, you could pretty much turn any dough into a no-knead dough, especially if you're doing cold bulk fermentation. And actually, I think that from now on, I will be using the no-knead method whenever I'm making a cold bulk fermented dough. And I would suggest you give it a try too, see how it works out. Okay, after the first fold, pop the dough back into the fridge for another 15 minutes of chilling. And after the second round of chilling, we need to give it another fold. I wet my hands with water again. Now, I'm going to turn the dough upside down. Because the folds are on the bottom, I repeat the same step as earlier. Fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle, until the dough ball is nice and tight. Towards the end, to round it off, you can pick the dough up, then push the sides down and up into itself. Just don't make it too tight, you don't want to tear it. Now back in the bowl it goes with the smooth side up. Now we can go back into the fridge for another 15 minutes of chilling. The following will be the final fold and you can clearly see that the dough is keeping its shape a lot better. So once again turn it over and fold it. And after all this folding and chilling we'll check the temperature and see how it's changed. As you saw earlier my dough was about 1 degree too warm after mixing. But after receiving 3 folds and spending just 45 minutes in the fridge it has dropped down by a whole 5 degrees. That is quite a significant difference. This is a great way for cooling your dough down quickly and preventing it from over fermenting because now it needs to go in the fridge for around 12 to 16 hours. And just look at that, it's puffed up beautifully. I just love this method because I can make the dough in the evening, go to bed and it'll be ready by the next day. Okay, now let's transfer this dough to our baking tray. First, some olive oil. You can never have too much olive oil, am I right? I mean, you can use as much or as little as you want really, but it just works so well here. I did not write down the exact amount of oil I used for the toppings because I just didn't measure it and it's not important, it's up to your taste. 
Make sure you spread the oil so it covers the whole tray. Then rub the dough bowl with some oil as well. Finally, use your oily hand to gently release the dough from the bowl. Don't poke it, just gently scoop it up. Then place it in your baking tray, facing the same direction with the smooth side up. Now once again, gently, with your fingertips, spread the dough out so it fills the tray. At least if you're using a small tray like I am. Of course you can make it thicker or thinner to your liking. There is no rule to how thick your focaccia should be. I just like it when mine fits the tray and has nice squared corners. Right now we can cover it up and leave it for the final proof, which will take around two and a half hours. And during the final hour of fermentation preheat the oven, 220 degrees Celsius, fan off. And that is 430 Fahrenheit. As you can see the dough looks nice and puffy, it's nice and wobbly, it's clearly risen. If yours is taking longer, we'll leave it for longer. For reference, my kitchen was around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So if your kitchen is warmer or cooler, adjust the final proofing time, up or down. Take care when topping your focaccia. Don't just dump the toppings on and then start spreading them out. The best practice is to lay them down with equal spaces in between them. And once you're done laying your toppings down, use your fingertips to push them into the dough. You want to push them down until they hit the tray. If you don't push the toppings in properly, they'll just pop out as the bread bakes. As you can see, I repeated this step just to make sure that everything stays in there. At this point, I was getting too excited and I forgot about a very important thing. And yes, you guessed it, it's more olive oil. But as I said earlier, it is up to you how much oil you use. Normally, I would sprinkle a pinch of sea salt on this, but the toppings are quite salty this time, so I skipped it. Right, let's get this bad boy in the oven. It'll take around 25 minutes. I'm baking mine on the lower shelf of the oven, as I don't want the top to color too quickly. And I'm using my pizza steel as well. And that is mainly because my oven doesn't have the bottom heating element, so using the baking steel is the next best thing. It heats the bread from the bottom, it makes it jump up, it gives it a good oven spring and a nice crispy bottom. I used to use a pizza stone in my oven, but I realized that the steel is much better. Stones are quite porous, metal is dense. The steel holds the heat a lot better and it transfers it a lot better too. So if you have a choice, I would highly suggest choosing a steel over a stone. You can find one of those too in my Amazon shop, link down below, along with any other equipment that I use in my videos. But well, let's get back to our bread for a second here. Doesn't it look beautiful? It's got that hearty whole wheat flavor, a nice light texture, the salty goat's cheese, the olives, and the chives just work so well together. I mean goat's cheese and onions, that's just a classic combo. I wonder what toppings you will choose for your whole wheat focaccia. The possibilities here are endless, and it's all good in my book. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever tried something like this before? Do let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here, subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.